Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about a turbocharged six cylinder that could potentially be replacing the 5.7 Hemi V8 that is in the Ram 1500 and a bunch of other vehicles as well, like the Grand Cherokee, the Dodge Durango, the Dodge Challenger, Charger, the list goes on and on. But before we get into this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my friend DJ for bringing this information up to me. So basically, he sent me a bunch of stuff on this engine. So what I need you guys to do is I need you to go subscribe to his YouTube channel for helping me out with today's video. Video. link in the description down below and then as for today's video first off we're going to talk about this new engine what it's actually all about and then we're going to get into what this engine means for all of these brands that use the 5.7 liter Hemi and yeah let's get into the video so before we get into the specifications for this new engine we have to talk about why this engine is even happening so the general trend for the automotive industry is going towards electrification going towards hybrids right going towards smaller displacement engines generally turbocharged because those will get a little bit better fuel economy compared to a smaller displacement supercharged engine. And then aside from that, we've already actually gotten a sneak peek in to what this engine is going to be like with the new Jeep Wrangler 4XE. Now, if you haven't seen my review on that, I'd recommend going and watching that so you guys can see what that vehicle actually drives like. But with that particular engine, it is codenamed the Hurricane, which is kind of interesting. It's a turbocharged two liter four cylinder that goes through a new variation on the eight speed automatic made by ZF that can actually handle a hybrid system. Now, with that particular engine and transmission combination with the electric motors, the total system output ends up being about 375 horsepower and then 470 pound-feet of torque. And in the Wrangler, it gets well over 20 miles per gallon. And so it has more torque and more horsepower than what you can get with the 5.7 Hemi in some vehicles and it gets significantly uh, better fuel economy as well. So it's pretty much just all around better other than the fact that it's a dinky little two liter four cylinder. Now again, like I said, that is pretty much what we have right now in terms of engines that are similar to what this new engine is that's coming out. So the new powertrain is going to be a three liter inline six. So instead of being a two liter inline four, three liter inline six, so bigger engine, bigger displacement, all that kind of stuff. And again, it's gonna be paired to the hybrid powertrain from ZF, or sorry, rather the hybrid transmission made by ZF, that eight speed automatic. Now in terms of power outputs, we don't exactly have any figures yet, but if that two liter is producing 375 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque, I feel like it's pretty safe to assume that a three liter inline six that's also paired to a hybrid system is probably gonna produce quite a bit more power and torque. So I imagine it'll be in excess of 400 horsepower and probably in excess of 500 pound feet of torque, which would make it significantly stronger compared to the 5.7 Hemi because the 5.7 Hemi right now only produces 360 horsepower in some vehicles. In other vehicles, it's upwards of 395 like the Ram 1500 truck. And then in terms of the torque, it's anywhere from 390 pound feet to 410 pound feet. And so again, this system overall would get better fuel economy than the Hemi. It would also have more power and more torque as well, but obviously a lot more complexity happening. Um, but other than that, we really don't have a whole lot of information on this new powertrain other than what I just mentioned. And if you guys are wondering, the first vehicle that'll most likely get this new powertrain is the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now, the reason they're doing that is Jeep buyers are more open to powertrains like this than truck buyers. And I think they're gonna test this powertrain out in the Jeep, and then they're gonna kind of get people used to it. And then they'll slowly squeeze it over into the truck. And I'll kind of get more into that a little bit later in this video. Uh, but the new Grand Cherokee that's coming out most likely will have this as an option. And I mean, it makes sense if you guys don't know, the majority of Grand Cherokees sold actually have the 3.6 liter V6, the Pentastar V6. And so if they basically got rid of that offering and then offered this, or maybe offered this as a more premium option, then that's not a huge stretch for those Jeep buyers because they're already used to having a six cylinder engine. And so having a six cylinder with a hybrid system that gets better fuel economy, they're going to be all about it. Uh, but with all that being said, let's get into why this powertrain matters and what I think is going to happen timeline wise and all that. The first reason why this new powertrain matters so much is it is a huge departure from what uh, we'll just say FCA generally does with these four brands, right? Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, and Jeep, right? Because for the longest time, it's mostly been large displacement, high horsepower engines that don't get the best fuel economy, but sound amazing and are tons of fun. Whereas this is going in a completely different route, right? Smaller displacement, turbocharged hybrid to get good fuel economy, right? It'll still have good power outputs, but 
I mean, there's no arguing. A naturally aspirated V8 is always going to sound better than a turbocharged inline six. And so again, it's kind of a departure, but it really is just a sign of the times that we're in where everything is going towards this electrification and towards uh, just having, again, hybrid vehicles and then the smaller displacement turbocharged engines to meet those fuel economy ratings that are being mandated by governments all across the world. Now, in terms of the timeline that I think this is going to happen in, I don't think it's going to happen super fast, but I think it's going to come sooner than what most people uh, think. So right now we have all of the things getting held up by COVID right now because of parts restrictions. And so I think that releasing a new powertrain probably isn't necessarily in the books right now because at this point manufacturers are just trying to get cars out right it's been extremely difficult and so i think we're going to have this little slump throughout the rest of 2021 and probably into 2022 as well but come 2023 i think that most of the supply issues we're having are pretty much going to be gone and so then we're going to have a situation where we're going to see a bunch of new powertrains and everything and the thing that's funny is 2023 kind of coincides, you know, that year range roughly kind of coincides with a lot of these government mandates where things have to kind of be figured out at that point. And there's a lot of mandates that are kind of, in, at least in the U.S., that are by about 2030. And so a lot of manufacturers want to kind of be ahead of the curve. And so that's why they've kind of set these timelines at the middle of the decade. Uh, but that's at least my assumption is I think that we might see this powertrain in a very limited amount uh, in terms of vehicles like we might see it in the Grand Cherokee for the 2022 model year. But in terms of it being in other vehicles across the lineup, I don't think we're going to see that until maybe 2023 or 2024. But yes, I think that this is going to end up replacing the 5.7 Hemi, right? They are pretty much at the limit with that engine. There's only so much more power they can squeeze out of it. And there's only so much more they can do to get that powertrain to have better fuel economy. And so we're pretty much at the limit with the 5.7 Hemi, which is really sad. You guys know I love that engine. I love how it sounds. I love how it drives. But it's just kind of the route that things are going. And so, I mean, if we teleported ourselves in, you know, three to four years into the future, don't be surprised if you go to a Ram dealership and all you'll see are 1500 series trucks with turbocharged engines or fully electric and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, again, I know it's a tough pill to swallow, but it's just kind of how things are uh, going at this point. And the last thing I want to mention is even more on the speculative side because I love speculating on stuff like this. And the thing that I'm kind of thinking with this engine, which it could be used for, is actually the Ram T-Rex. Now, hear me out, guys. So we have the current T-Rex, which has the supercharged 6.2 liter V8, gets horrible fuel economy, sounds amazing. I have one, I absolutely love it. But I think that this engine could be thrown into the T-Rex platform, right? And then this is what could compete against the Raptor because the Raptor still with the third gen is going to be using a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 and it doesn't have any extra power compared to the previous generation Raptor. And so I think that this engine actually might be the engine they also use for a less expensive TRX, which some people have dubbed the TR. I do need, to make, do need to make a full video about this, but I thought I'd mention this at the end of this video because it does have to deal with this powertrain. So that's another thing that could be coming is we could have a high, you know, a mild hybrid or full on hybrid TRX with a three liter inline six to compete against the Raptor, which I think that'd be pretty interesting. I mean, think about that. like you see this big wide body truck, right? I, obviously it happens with the Raptor and it kind of, you know, especially with the exhaust sounds a little bit like a fart can, but imagine you see this big wide body truck and it pretty much sounds like a BMW or a Supra, right? Because they both have three, they have three liter inline sixes in their vehicles too. So that, <laughs> I think that would be pretty funny. Um, but I want to actually start a discussion about this in the comment section. So I want you guys to let me know if you're excited about this powertrain and you know what you would like to see this powertrain applied to or if you think it's absolute sacrilege and if they just need to scrap it and maybe put a hybrid system with the 5.7 Hemi. Yeah, we do have the e-torque system, but that's a very mild hybrid system. I'm talking like full on hybrid system with the 5.7 Hemi. I mean, that would still be pretty cool, but I want you guys to let me know what you think overall. And then, yeah, that's pretty much gonna sum things up for today's video. If you do happen to be stopping for the first time, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe, comment down below what you think. And then if you do feel like my videos are of value to you, I'm gonna include a link to my Patreon in the description down below. I'd really appreciate your support over there. I'll see you guys.